Hey everybody, it's Sean from Open Visual Effects again, and I just want to give you a quick run through of what I was doing in this comp. Uh, it's not exactly feature film quality. There's some things I would really dial in, but I was just, uh, as the compositing wasn't the focus of the tutorial, I just kind of slapped something together. But uh, but let me give you a walkthrough of what's happening. So this is the footage. Uh, it's just it was shot on a GoPro years ago. Uh, you can see there's some blown out whites that do not color correct good. There's some oversaturated blues, some extreme lens distortion, but I didn't worry about any of that, uh, or the lens distortion anyway, for this this uh, tutorial, because it was mainly about moving the 3D track out. Uh, this was where I did the 3D track right in Nuke. Uh, and then once you have that, you can create a 3D setup over here, which is what I have. Uh, you can see 3D export and setup. The right geo node is still in there for writing it out as an alembic and uh, just a few cylinders with a checkerboard and a color texture uh, and a card, the point cloud. Uh, you can take a look at that here if you want. You can watch it play back. You can look through the camera, all that normal stuff. Um, so yeah, so that was that's that. Um, there's also a couple cards in here from... Uh, when I was placing some things, so they're there if you need them for anything, if you want to mess around with it. But let's get back to the comp itself. So this is, uh, the first thing I was doing was this sky. Uh, let's see if I, you can see I'm desaturating this sky a lot. Uh, Cause that over, that, that super saturation and it does weird things to the edges and it makes it look like video and it's just crappy. Uh, and then I also wanted to handle this over bright uh, you can see if you gamma down and gain down, I'm sorry, that's the gain, right? Um, you can see there's just no information in there. So, nothing you can do. <clears throat> so I rendered out a really crappily textured wooden tree, blurred it a tiny bit, used a luminance key, and slapped it over top of the footage, which kind of lets you dial in more detail now, and things don't go... Uh, things don't get crazy over bright. It looks, it, it doesn't even match perfectly, but I think it's uh, good enough. If you're looking at the tree, then the shot's a disaster anyway, and you're not even looking at the right thing. So uh, it was enough to get that brightness off. Uh, then I did a noise pattern, uh, which is animated, uh, grading it a bit. Uh, I do a garbage roto just to mask it out. I put it on a 3D card in space. So it has the camera move on it, render it out. You can see it's uh, it's an animated roto, it's an animated noise pattern, and it's running through the animated camera. And then I also, what I did was I, uh, I rotoed the branches, but it looks funky because I'm running, the, the branches are being, the roto is being projected onto 3D card, which is running through the 3D scene, which gives you a very nice alpha channel that matches up perfectly with the, the uh, the match move, uh, inverting it, blurring it, so you get that, and that is how I am slapping the mist element over. So there you can see exactly what's happening there. Uh, you can see I didn't spend a whole lot of time doing this stuff. Um, next up is the body uh, with on the pike. It's kind of out there in the middle. You can take a look at it here. There it is. And what I'm doing here is um, can I gamma this up a bit? Yeah. So. There it is, and you can see the alpha channel it kind of runs the whole length of the frame, uh, but I was using black, uh, so <laughs> you can't even see it. Um, but I'm stenciling off the bottom, and you can see this in the alpha. I'm kind of stenciling off. Uh, it's really subtle. Um, there you go. But I'm kind of... Do I even have it? Yeah, it's really subtle. I'm stenciling out the alpha a little bit, uh, just to kind of dim out the bottom of the... Uh, the pike, I'm darkening it a tiny bit, um, which kind of, or I'm sorry, not darkening, I'm lifting the black levels of it. And then I'm doing a kind of black level adjustment on the entire thing, except for the middle. I did a roto, I didn't want to affect there, I wanted it darker there in the middle. So I did a roto inverted. Uh, and then don't ever do this, uh, don't ever pre mult twice in a row. Um, I was still getting this bright edge, which is, I think I just didn't, you know, paint out uh, the right edge in Photoshop. I didn't get close enough. Um, so I pre-malted twice, which usually this results in a black line around whatever it is. 
um, I'm not, you can see I'm not even on pre malting here, but uh, that second pre malt, uh, whew, that's a disaster. He should go back and fix it. But anyway, it worked for this uh, to kind of get rid of that bright edge on him. Uh, and everything else was black, so it didn't matter that uh, it was darkening some of the other edges. Running that, putting that on a card, running it through the 3D camera, blurring it a tiny bit, and slapping it over and holding out the trees. Uh, just like I held out the using that roto, that same roto up here, just extending it down. Uh, next up is the 3D leaves that I rendered out of Blender, which you can see they're pre-malted. Um, I scaled them up a tiny bit uh, just to hit the edges, and I actually didn't even render the last frame. For some reason, the last frame didn't render. Um, so, there you go. Easter egg. Uh, blur it a tiny bit, slap it over, hold out the trees again. Yeah, you can see them in there, right? Uh, next up is the skulls and the shadow. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking... I've got a shadow pass. Well, I did a you know, multi-layer EXR, right? So I've got the shadow pass here, and I've got the skulls pass themselves, which you can see better on the first frame. So there's a third one up there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so there's that alpha. I'm blurring it a tiny bit, and then I'm taking the uh, green channel of the footage uh, I wanted to kind of when you slap a shadow over uh, footage you don't want you don't want to like you could very easily just slap the shadow and just darken um, you know darken uh, but it darkens everything right so you can just you can just darken using that alpha but it darkens everything it so it makes the shadows that were already there darker and you don't want that you want the shadows, uh, those shadows should remain the same and everything else should come down to their level. So I did a quick little Luma mat. It looks horrendous. Uh, it could probably use like a blur or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, see, so that already looks a, a bunch better. Um, but I'd still want to dial it in more if this was like a real shot. Um, but anyway, that's what that's doing. That's starting to put in the shadow. This is uh, tinting it a tiny bit. I'm using just... I'm not holding out, I'm tinting the whole thing, um, because it wasn't as red. Uh, you can see these shadows kind of have a reddish tint to them, and this one just looks a little bit more green. So I'm just kind of shifting it a bit more red so it matches. Um, and then I'm, again, I'm darkening overall. I'm just slapping the whole, the, the render, the actual RGBA, the RGB of the shadow pass is black. So I'm just kind of putting that over at like 0.7 to just kind of, dial it in more to that level could probably actually go more like 0.6 looks a bit more closer to that um then the skulls go on but see yeah i turn that back up 7.7 because .7, all the darkest spots get hidden right so um yeah and then the skulls go over the skulls were just getting a little bit of uh i unpremalted color cracked a little bit uh mostly in the darks right i think that lifting the black levels and shifting them a little bit redder uh and then pre-malting again, blurring, softening, slapping them over. And then down here is the spider webs, um, which I uh, I made a roto for, and I'm stenciling those out. So you can see I've got I've got the web. I'm flipping it. I'm cutting some things out of it, uh, right? So you can see what that's doing. Cutting off the parts you don't need. Putting that on a 3D card. Running it through the camera. And then it stays right where we need it to stay. Uh, and it actually doesn't look like uh, it could be greener. I would, I should go back and tint this green and soften it a tiny bit uh, just to dial it in a tiny bit better, which you can actually do after this, right? Multiply, just do like a 0.1. Uh, try, oof, no, that's way too much. Uh, 1.13, something like that. And then throw a blur of like two see that already look at how much better that looks i even go down a tiny bit but yeah that looks a lot better so that's the kind of stuff i would be doing if i really spent some quality time on this which i obviously didn't and these black levels are disastrous they should match before you get into any color correction but i didn't even worry about it that much so now i'm doing a uh, color lookup just to tint it blue which is basically just the color curves uh nuke likes to call them color lookup so uh, and then I'm doing a bit of 
evening out on all the, the blacks and stuff, the darks. Uh, I'm also pulling a luminance key to get the brightest spots and uh, tinting those also kind of greenish blue. Uh, Pre-multiplying it so you only get that. I'm blurring it a tiny bit and I'm blurring it a whole lot. And then I'm just putting those over very subtle just to kind of give a little bit of a softening. Um, kind of like a multi-layer blur. And then I'm just throwing a typical vignette on, which is just that, blurred with a black solid. Um, and then I'm cropping to make sure there's no extra stuff on the outside, and that's it. So that's what's all this. That's a walkthrough of this whole comp, and I hope that explains some things. If you were uh, had questions about anything, and you can see a million places where it could be made a lot better, so uh, I strongly encourage you to jump in there and do that. Um, it, I'd love if I had spent more time on. It, I'd love to have gotten rid of this bright sky, really dimmed it down, cloudy, dark day or something. There's a spot here in the middle too. Uh, this bright thing is really distracting to me. Uh, I'd love to get rid of that kind of that bright sun on the path. Um, but yeah, anyway, have fun with it, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.